Hi folks, thanks once again for joining us on Prophecy Update. And please remember to hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell and please give us a like. That really helps YouTube share the video to more people. First of all, I want to thank you so much, those of you who took advantage of getting the free download of the Temple of the Antichrist ebook. Um, over 200 of you took advantage of that and that was a real thrill and we'll be getting another one out before too long. Okay, folks, before we get into this incredible story, let me first of all share with you where I'm coming from on this subject. I believe the whole UFO phenomenon is a huge deception. Let me give you a bit of personal history. Since I was a kid, I've been interested in the UFO phenomenon. Ever since my granny took me to see the 1950s movie Invaders from Mars, at first, I believed there could be life on other planets, reaching out to us, watching us, and so on. At one point, I even used to write for a couple of homespun UFO newsletters here in the UK. But when I really got into researching these beings and the encounters between them and humans, and what the Bible has to say in Genesis 6 about the sons of God and so on, I began to realise there is one mother of all deceptions going on. And it's been going on for centuries. As time went on, I heard from other sources, and I mean intelligent men, researchers. And we are talking about the 80s and the 90s. People like Dr. J. Allen Hynek from America's Project Blue Book, and astronomer and investigator Jacques Vallée, and investigator John Keel and others. From these and others, I realised from these sources that what we're dealing with here are beings from another dimension, a spiritual dimension, and it is demonic, satanic, and it is mind-blowingly deceptive and incredibly evil. I then heard or read, I'm not sure which, that we would soon begin to hear about remains of these entities from thousands of years ago, that it was they who actually built the pyramids, and so on, and that we would soon, as a part of the deception, begin to hear about there being incidents of contact or remains of crashed UFOs coming to light. Well, lo and behold, that's exactly what we're being told today. I was told this decades ago that this would come as a deception. It's brilliantly, satanically deceptive. Yes, I believe there has been some kind of contact and there has been remains of crashed vehicles, so-called, discovered by various governments. But I really believe it is part of Satan's grand end-time deception and it's happening right now. Now, apart from the testimonies of David Grush and his colleagues last year, there are now more coming to light. And just as I warned, it would happen. And I'm not saying these whistleblowers are all lying. Not at all. That's not what I'm saying. But what I believe is we are all of us, all of us, being fooled by intelligences way above our intelligence, who from thousands of years back have laid these plans for these end of days before the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. They are out to deceive us, and take us away from believing in the God of the Bible and the only way of salvation, which is Jesus Christ. So no, I don't believe these witnesses are lying. They're reporting what they've seen and been told by others who witnessed what I and many others believe is part of this burgeoning grand deception. Their part is to make us believe we're not alone in the universe. And that perhaps even these beings are our creators from thousands, if not millions of years ago, watching over us and caring for us, when in fact they're demonic, despicable deceivers of the human race in the end times. While we see prophecy being fulfilled on earth all around us through human actions and events, prophetic end-time deception is also with us in the form of the UFO phenomenon, 
and it's coming at us from the spiritual realm like never before. And it will be powerful and so incredibly convincing that even the very elect, the Bible says, if possible, may be deceived. Folks, that's how powerful this last day's deception is beginning to grow before us. Now, the Daily Mail reported just recently how Frank Milburn, a veteran of the British Army's elite parachute regiment, told the Daily Mail he has spoken with a member of the MI6 run unit that conducted the alleged operation to retrieve crashed alien UFO craft in the UK. Now I'm reading from the report. Milburn said he also spoke to UK Royal Air Force crews who chased and fired on a pair of disc-shaped UFOs that travelled at supersonic speeds outstripping their fighter jets. Excuse my voice, I've got a cold. Milburn refused to reveal the identity of his former elite comrade, citing security and his desire to remain anonymous. Dailymail.com refers to him using the name or alias John. But in an exclusive interview with the Daily Mail, Milburn divulged eye-popping details of the story told to him by his ex-Special Force friend after both had left the army, saying he wanted to support recent US whistleblowers' claims of a secret UFO crash retrieval program. A now declassified 2000 UK Defence Intelligence staff report obtained by the DailyMail.com states that the existence of unexplained aerial phenomenon is indisputable and included a scatter plot pictured of UAP reports across the UK between 1987 and 1991. Milburn said that in the 1980s his friend John worked for a reported secret unit now known as the E-Squadron, which specialised in covert, clandestine and paramilitary operations. E-Squadron, previously called the Increment, recruited the most experienced and reliable operators from the UK's Special Force Units, the Special Air Service, SAS, Special Boat Service, SBS, and Special Reconnaissance Regiment, SRR. The US equivalent to the E-Squadron is the CIA's Special Operations Group and Joint Special Operations Command, staffed from Tier 1 units, including Delta Force and SEAL Team 6. Milburn said John served in the 1982 Falklands War and on numerous high-risk missions around the world, but one of the most disturbing was in his home country in the UK in the late 1980s. Quote, he told me they were deployed in a troop-sized unit, maybe 20 to 30 special force operators, Milburn said. They'd been told by the RAF Royal Air Force that a craft which wasn't Russian, British or American had been downed. He said they were tasked to secure and retrieve the craft in the north of England. They were flown in by helicopter, they established a cordon around the craft, a perimeter, and then they approached the craft. He didn't describe the craft, he just said it was obvious it was non-human, and it was obvious that there were occupants who had fled the scene on foot, or whatever you may call them. He said it became a task then of tracking down these beings to try to bring them into custody. Part of the unit was left protecting the craft. They would have left maybe six to eight blokes to cordon the craft and the others would have been on foot, quad bikes or four by fours trying to track down these entities that escaped from it with helicopters supporting. He said after that it was totally passed over. He said scientists, technicians came in and it was completely out of our hands. We were flown away by helicopter. We knew nothing more than that after that. And he said John then declined to give him further details and didn't give him any further proof. But the ex-paratrooper said he trusted the word of his elite ex-comrade after vetting him with other SAS veterans. However, Milburn's former commanders are staunchly opposed to any suggestion of recovered non-human craft. 
the UK's Ministry of Defence, MOD, told the DailyMail.com they are not aware of any salvage operations with materials of unexplained origin. But then in 2021, then Defence Minister Baroness Annabel Goldie told Parliament that the MOD holds no reports on unidentified aerial phenomenon, but constantly monitors UK airspace to identify and respond to any credible threat to its integrity. But folks, a 2000 UK Defence Intelligence Staff report said the existence of unexplained aerial phenomenon is indisputable. Credited with the ability to hover, land, take off, accelerate to exceptional velocities and then vanish, they can reportedly alter their direction of flight suddenly and clearly can exhibit aerodynamic characteristics well beyond those of any known aircraft or missile, either manned or unmanned. That's what the report said back in 2000. So what they've been saying later simply doesn't ring true. Friends, it's clear. We have been, we are being, for want of better word, visited by non-human beings from beyond our Earth. But folks, it's not from other planets. It's from the spirit world of fallen angels. All this only adds veracity to the warnings of the Bible for these days, days where doctrines of demons are being fed to us not only from the pulpit, but by beings that are out to totally deceive and soften the planet up for the grand deception, the arrival of the Antichrist himself. Thank you folks for watching. Please subscribe, please give us a like. Please remember when you subscribe to click the bell icon so you will be notified when new videos come up. And friend, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, today is the day for you. Don't wait until tomorrow. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ came to this earth, lived a perfect life, died on the cross, a pure and sinless man. He died in your place for your sins and mine. And the only way you will ever get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. You are lost. You are on your way to hell. You are on your way to a place called the Lake of Fire. And I have to tell you in all honesty, unless you repent, that means to turn around and go in a different direction and follow God, follow Jesus Christ, I'm afraid one day you will stand before God at the white throne judgment and you will be judged guilty of your sins. The only way to get your sins forgiven is by accepting the fact that Jesus died in your place and then repent of your sins, follow him, be baptised and ask the Lord to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Until next time, my dear friends, thank you so much for watching. And remember, when he comes, I'll see you in the clouds. Bye-bye.